Newcastle 2, Bournemouth 2, a chaotic, insane, ridiculous game has ended with a point at St. James's Park. We're not in prison, we are at St. James's Park. Uh, I'm Charlotte, I'm joined by Adam to kind of give you our instant reaction. My instant reaction is that I feel like I have aged 100 years watching that game. It was chaotic and insane and there were lots of the same criticisms I think that we've all had about team selection or reaction in game but Adam initially how are you feeling? I feel like I've been at the dentist it's how I feel like there's a sort of a level of anxiety that's been lifted off me because it's over but at the same time I know I didn't enjoy it but also I did need, we did need to go I did need to go in I did need attended to so just feel sick to be completely <laughs> honest with you I feel a little bit ill okay and the game itself? Uh, from what I can remember of it, because I just I've got this just anxious smear of a memory. I, I could not tell you what happened with that second goal. One minute we had the ball out wide, and then next to me someone went, "E, do you know Matt Ritchie scored?" And I was like, "Oh, I've somehow stumbled back into 2013. How fun!" Um, it yeah. was a weird, weird game. It was incredibly chaotic. That, like that second goal, their second goal, and that our second goal were kind of like <laughs> total, goal. like stupid goals that like kind of typify the whole game and almost our whole season. Like their second goal, super frustrating. Um, Dan Byrne gets beaten by his man again. Um, Dubravka slips oh, over. Yeah. Like it, it, it happens. It happens in the middle of the pitch, loads, you know. But Dubravka slips over. One thing that's really nice. Um, wait, was that the first goal? Yeah, that was their first That goal. was their first goal. So one thing was really nice. I no, one that. thing that was really nice. I've got myself really confused. This is the instant reaction. It's raw. It's fine. Um, one thing that was nice, actually, after we got the penalty po- post their stupid goal. Um, yes. I'm get- yes. You've got it. It's in there. I'm, I'm, I'm there. The scored one. We got our penalty. Went back to 1-1. Then it was 2-1. And then it was 2-2. This is the hard hitting analysis you all come here for. Um, we scored the penalty, and Bruno turned to Dubravka and like celebrated with Dubravka. Like that was that was nice. Isn't that You're nice? right. That's nice that they did that. That's a nice moment. But that I is think. the only nice thing that's happened all day. That's not true. It is. It really is. I think if we um, if we have a striker, we win that game. Like it, it is. It is just oh, glaringly God. obvious. Um, for those of you watching or listening, at various points during that game, we had we started with Gordon up front. Miggy went up front for a little bit in the um, in the first half, and um, Barnes, Barnes had a go, B- Barnes half, yeah. had a go at being up front, and then Murphy came on and he also had a go at being up front very unsuccessfully I will say about that one um so everybody had a little go and nobody managed <laughs> nobody was any nobody was any good up front but the problem was we were actually really good sort of in the channels and getting in behind several times we got we worked really good opportunities in the space out wide and it, you, so your brain automatically goes oh I wonder who's going to tap this chance in and you would look and there's a yawning chasm in the centre of the pitch where you realise all of a sudden the player who's got the ball in the wide area is the one who was supposed to be in the middle and has gone out there and that's it's just time and time again and it's teams do play that way it is fine to have that as a system but you tend to then have number 10s who fill that space the guy from the right comes yeah. over and fills that space a midfield runner fills that space and that's nobody's job in the team yeah. so time and time again we would work these really nice situations even put in a great ball yes. and nobody was there and that's why you play with a centre forward usually it's a really good um, example of why you should play with a centre forward and I advise that we do that um, on, a, on a go forward basis if we could get a striker that'd be great uh, any, any do you know what I'm actually surprised they didn't just go and pluck like whoever the best striker at reserve or youth team level is and said look we know this is way well, beyond the level Parkinson yeah can... even somebody like that just stick him in and go look we know this is a bit of a jump for you we know it's a leap we're not expecting you to be a starting centre forward but can you just stand in the right place and maybe there's a tap in for you at some point because yeah. there were several tap ins available to several people who didn't exist today yeah there were um, speaking of sort of nice crosses and nice balls I will say no oh dear uh, I will say that I thought Lewis Miley had an excellent game today oh. um, there's, there's, a, there's, still, there's still obviously there's still work to be done on his game he's only 17 years old um, as everybody he always mentions but um he i thought he had a nice game he uh he he doesn't turn very quickly with the ball if at all which is frustrating um but he made 
some lovely crosses and some lovely balls, which resulted in some of these yes. nice opportunities that we then couldn't tap in. Not to sound like a total nerd, I think Lewis Miley might be one of the best players I've ever seen for recovering the ball in transition. So like when we lose it or we give it away, when the opposition are trying to make that first pass out and counter, Lewis Miley is unbelievable at winning that straight back. I think that's how we got the equaliser against Luton yeah. as well. But three or four times today when all of a sudden you're like, oh, we're giving it away, we're in trouble. There's that long gangly <laughs> leg and he's won it back. Yeah, well, I thought he was very good today, and I'm, you know, I'm really pleased to see his game coming on leaps and bounds. Obviously, he's sort of been thrown in at the deep end himself. Um, yeah, just, just kind of just a frustrating game. I just feel like frustrated. Look at this. I think we've all lost our minds. Um, it, it's a point against a lower lower table yes. side. Bad. It's not good. This isn't good. Um, we're not gonna. I'm not gonna stand here and say brilliant. Everything's gonna be fine. But um, it's fine because it's just Arsenal away next week, isn't it? So <laughs> that's not a bother. It's similar to the Luton game in that on the one hand. Going into the game, if you'd say this is a high-scoring draw, like, well, that's a bad result. We should be better. We should be able to keep them out. We should be scoring goals. But again, it's another, like, with minutes to go in that game, we have, we're getting nothing from it. We're getting beat. And they've dug deep enough again to go and find a result where, I mean, going in the last 50 minutes of that, you could not see where an equaliser was coming from. Again, with the centre, no centre forward, with nothing was happening. And then Matt Ritchie came on. I think we'd be remiss if we don't mention... How silly of me. I did not anticipate the Matt Ritchie substitution, which is my fault. I didn't obviously... Uh, I didn't think that through. But mm. to have gone and rescued a point again when we didn't look like we were able to do so, it says something. It doesn't say enough, and the thing it says isn't good, but it's better than... Other Newcastle sides have got beat today. We've seen that a hundred times. It doesn't matter that they were allegedly better or we had the momentum or we took the lead at any point, right? Lesser Newcastle teams have lost those games. And I think now that that's two in the bounds, I think it does say something about the character. If I've got to find a positive, it's maybe that. Team has loads of character. Uh, hopefully they'll give us an extra 10 points at the end of the season for having <laughs> lots of character. We'll leave it there. Uh, thank you so much for watching. This has been Instant Reaction.